Welcome to the final episode of our plant-based comfort food series for autumn. I think you're really going to love this one because today we're making lasagna. This lasagna is packed with flavor, deliciously creamy and made with whole food ingredients. I can basically split the cooking process up into four parts, starting with making the lentil bolognese, followed by preparing a creamy cashew sauce, and then a ricotta style filling made with tofu, and then finally assembling it all to bake, of course. Lasagna is definitely not a 15 minute meal, but it's definitely worth the effort. So let's not waste another minute and get right into making the bolognese sauce. Today I'm going to use green poi lentils to replace mince in the sauce, but any brown or green lentil will work well. You just want to choose one that holds its shape well. Before these go in though, I am going to prep and cook a sofrito, which provides delicious base flavors and great texture to the sauce. If you're not familiar with the term sofrito, you can check out the first episode in the series where I spoke more about it when including it in the risotto recipe. Today I will use my trusty food processor to help me with the prep as there are quite a few things to chop finely and it just does it better than me, I'm sorry to say. And I will start with my onion, just a regular brown onion that I've peeled and cut into chunks to make it a little easier for the machine. When using a food processor to chop veggies or anything else for that matter, best practices are to not have pieces that are too big to begin with and then using the pulsing function so that you don't over chop your veggies. Along with my onion for the sofrito, I'm using one whole carrot, sort of medium sized, as well as two celery stalks. These three vegetables are pretty typical for a sofrito in Italian cooking. You might find that things pop up the sides of the food processor bowl, so just scrape those down between pulses and that way everything will be chopped a pretty equal size. Something I don't usually include in a sofrito but that gives this bolognese a delicious flavor and some body as well is mushrooms. I've got some portobellos here today, but chestnut mushrooms or if you're feeling fancy, some porcini would work really well as well. I'm going to use the food processor to chop these as well, but first I'm just going to break them up a little bit as it helps with getting a more evenly sized chop in the processor. For this recipe that serves six to eight people, I'm using two large portobello mushrooms and I tried to pulse these a little less to make them a larger size as they shrink down more when you saute the veggies. To cook my bolognese or ragu, I'm heating up two tablespoons of olive oil in a big Dutch oven or you could use a big pot. And once that's warm, I'm adding the chopped up vegetables, including the mushrooms. I always make sure to season with salt and stir that through whenever I saute anything like this. It just helps release the liquids and bring the flavors out of the veggies. The last ingredient for my sofrito is some garlic. I'm using three sort of large garlic cloves and I just chop them finely and then add them to the pot with the other veggies stirring them through and making sure everything is well combined as I cook it all over a pretty low heat. So now these veggies need to sweat away for about 10 to 15 minutes just so that they soften up nicely and to allow the mushrooms to cook off some of its liquid. In the meantime, I will crush some of these canned peeled whole tomatoes. You could of course just use canned chopped tomatoes, but I've become a fan of these and it's quite fun to squish the tomatoes by hand actually. There most certainly is no exact science to doing this. All you need to do is just get your hands in there and mush the tomatoes up until they are a nice finely chopped consistency. When the tomatoes are looking good and the veggies have cooked nicely, as you can see here, they're softened and they have shrunk in volume. That's when I go in with two tablespoons of tomato paste just to give the tomato flavor of the sauce more depth. And I like to fry that off for a couple of minutes before I add in my chopped tomatoes. Once 
once the tomatoes have gone in i also add in some water i usually add about three cups and i like to use the water to just rinse out any tomato residue in the bowl or in the cans just to make sure i get it all in there so now to flavor the sauce i've got some nice dried herbs starting with some dried basil then i add one teaspoon of dried oregano I also add in 2 tablespoons of vegetable stock powder to enhance the already savory base of the sauce. And I will also pour in a couple of tablespoons of soy sauce, as well as a little balsamic vinegar. These two will create a nice balance between them and give the sauce some more umami, making it deliciously savory. At this point I also like to season with some black pepper and then I grab my lentils and rinse them off. I just do this under cold water and use my hand to swirl it around. In this process you can also check that there are no rogue little stones or anything among your lentils. Then you can just add the lentils to the sauce and allow it to come to a boil. So the lentils give the sauce its body and replaces the traditional mince in the bolognese. You could cook the same sauce using a vegan soy mince, but you would need to use more volume than that of the lentils I've just added. You'll also probably want to reduce the water content if using vegan mince, as the lentils will absorb quite a bit of liquid in the pot here and swell up in the process. Lentils really work very well in lasagna. If you've never tried it, I hope you will give it a go. The lentils I've got cooking away in here will need to simmer for about 30 to 35 minutes before it can become a layer in the lasagna, so it gives me plenty of time to prepare the other two fillings if you will but before i get to those i want to thank squarespace for sponsoring this video and tell you a little bit about them squarespace is an all-in-one website builder with lots of great tools to create a beautiful and well-functioning website without any prior knowledge of coding or website building their fluid engine design system offers great customizable templates that will suit your style and brand for example they offer great blogging tools which allow you to share your stories photos and videos as well as schedule your posts as you wish. You can also use Squarespace to set up your own online store, whether you sell physical, digital or service products. I use Squarespace for my online photography portfolio and really enjoy how easy and intuitive it is to use the drag and drop technology to bring my creative ideas to life. So if you're thinking about creating a website for your project, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch your site, go to squarespace.com forward slash good eatings for 10% off your first website website or domain. So let's move on to making the creamy cashew sauce now. In this lasagna I will be replacing the traditional bechamel sauce and I'm going to give it a cheesy touch with some nutritional yeast and some seasonings. It's really easy to make using a good blender as I will just pop all the ingredients in here and then blitz it all until smooth. It's important to soak the cashews for this dough as it'll soften them up. You could soak them overnight in cold water or do what I've done here and soak them in hot water for roughly 30 minutes. So let's drain these and pop everything in the blender. I'm using one and a quarter cups worth of cashews here along with one small to medium sized carrot that has been steamed or you could boil it until tender. This will add a little bit of sweetness to the sauce and also a nice color. Next I'm adding in one and a half tablespoon of apple cider vinegar as well as one tablespoon of light or it can be called white miso paste which is great for adding savory flavor. For the cheesy touch I'm adding in a quarter cup of nutritional yeast as well as half a teaspoon of garlic powder. I also season with salt of course around half to one teaspoon's worth and I go in with one cup of unsweetened soy milk as well as a quarter cup of water and then I just blend it all on high until it's super smooth and silky. Now to 
to give this lasagna even more body, I'm making a ricotta style tofu filling. Again, it is very easy to prepare using the food processor and I prefer the processor over the blender for this as the blender would blend it too smoothly and we wanted to achieve that ricotta-like texture. So I'll just pop all the ingredients in here, starting with my block of firm tofu that I like to just break using my hands again. I used 300 grams worth of firm tofu to make this ricotta filling and to flavor it I squeeze in the juice of a quarter of a lemon which adds a nice tanginess. Again I also add some miso paste, here is half a tablespoon. Next up I go in with one teaspoon of garlic powder this time and then a mixture of one teaspoon of dried oregano and one teaspoon of dried basil. And then I add in three tablespoons of nutritional yeast again for the cheesy flavor and I season with a half to a whole teaspoon of salt again. I also go in with two tablespoons of olive oil and then I just blitz it up on auto. As this mixture has quite a thick consistency, it's good to scrape down the sides of the processor bowl a couple of times as you blend. This way you make sure everything is well combined once you add it to the lasagna. Now we have all our sauces and fillings ready and we can start building the lasagna. I'm using these gluten-free lasagna sheets, but of course wheat or whole wheat ones work perfectly too. There's no need to pre-cook these, so we can just go wild with the layering now. And in the meantime, I'm preheating the oven to 180 degrees Celsius, ready to bake it once it's all layered up. I always start with a thin layer of the bolognese or the ragu at the bottom when layering up my lasagna. This makes sure the lasagna sheets doesn't stick to the bottom and that they cook through properly even from the first layer. When laying out the lasagna sheets themselves, I always try to overlay them just a little bit to make sure the sauce stays between each layer as good as possible. And as my oven dish is a little bit bigger than the lasagna sheets themselves, I break up lasagna sheets just to fill it up completely. Then the main layering process starts and I always start a layer by adding a good amount of the bolognese. Then I go in with the creamy cashew sauce spreading it out while trying not to muddle the layers too much. Finally, the last thing going in between each layer are some good dollops of the tofu ricotta. Try to eyeball the measurements thinking that each sauce or component should be enough to create four to five layers in the lasagna. And then just proceed with repeating these steps until you reach the top of your dish. Also keep in mind though that the final layer will finish with the bolognese topped with the cashew creamy sauce. You don't want any of the tofu ricotta on the top going into the oven as it's more of a drier texture and fits better within the lasagna than baking on the top. to bake this beauty but before I put it into the oven I will cover it with some tin foil. This will keep the moisture in the lasagna for the first 30 minutes and allow the lasagna sheets to cook through. Then for the last 15 minutes we'll take the foil off to get that lovely darker color on the top layer. Make sure your oven is fully preheated when you start cooking the lasagna and after the first 30 minutes it's time to remove the tin foil and either you could just pop it back in the oven as it is or if you want to and want that extra cheesy layer on top you can add some grated vegan cheese which will melt nicely on top of the cashew sauce and complement it nicely. 
Then finish it off in the oven for 15 more minutes before you take it out and allow it to cool for maybe 5 minutes before you cut into it. I love serving a nice salad along with the lasagna just to add some contrast to that creamy richness. I'll make sure to link some nice side salads down below that will pair perfectly with this lasagna recipe. And to finish the lasagna itself, I love popping some fresh basil on top for visual interest and also because it's a really nice flavor, of course, that goes perfectly. So this is my vegan, mainly whole food now lasagna. It's full of flavor and such a great comfort food classic. I think I'm yet to meet someone who doesn't like lasagna. And while this isn't the most traditional version, I think it's a delicious alternative. I hope you make this tonight for a yummy Sunday dinner. And if you do, know that it keeps well in the fridge for a few days. It reheats really well if you just cover it in the oven or the microwave and you can freeze it too. I like to just cut it into squares and then pop them into the container for convenience. I really hope you enjoy this video and our comfort food cooking series. It's been a pleasure making it for you and I look forward to seeing you in our next video. Thank you for watching. Take care.